Hey, this is Bill at Model A Metal, and this is our rescue dog build that we're working on today. Today we're going to do some subrail uh, extensions. We're going to put the subrails on the car, on the frame, and talk about some patch panels. First thing we want to talk about is these panels right here. This panel is replaceable, and you can buy the whole thing. So this car over here has them, and it's back when I wasn't uh, into the restoration and the uh, traditional rods. I was more of a hot rodder. But this panel, at one of the uh, places that starts with an M, I think they're in New York, costs $199 a pair. So $100 a piece. Now there's another place online that doesn't have as good a reputation. Uh, their customer service is lacking a little bit, but I've always had no problem with them. Starts with an H, and they're from down southwest. Uh, $115 a pair, they're on sale this week. So if you don't need Henry Metal, you can replace this whole thing. All you gotta take these three rivets out, and boom, you're done. Or you can buy this patch panel. Now, I made my own, but the patch panel, a pair of them is $44. So really, if you think about what your time is worth and you don't care that it's Henry Metal, then uh, you, can get, you can get these for 44 bucks. So um, that's a good deal. So we're working on the fender extensions today, the subrail extensions today. I keep calling them fender extensions because this Camaro has fender extensions and that thing is calling my name. It's getting, it wants me to do some work on it. So this one's almost done. We're determining where these holes are and later, and later in the video I'm showing you how to find those holes and uh, Model A Metal, rescue dog build. We're gonna build this car and rescue it from a junk heap. So it's time to fix this subrail extension. It's pretty bad. Uh, they make these repop for $250 a pair. Uh, for a lot of people, it might be worth it. I am not trying to. I'm trying not to spend money on this thing. So uh, and I'm getting, trying to get some experience. So I'm gonna fix these. So um, the problem is it's rotted out rot it out here on the bend. It's got a hole here. I might leave that hole, but I am planning on trying to fix a lot of this metal. So I'm gonna wanna I'm gonna wanna weld it here. So maybe here, like I did the other one. So the other one I I started welding in the uh, patch. And I TIG welded this, and I got this. Now this in here, I might have some difficulty uh, getting in there with the TIG torch. So I might do that with MIG and just be able to blast and deposit metal in that space and get that up. And here I'm going to, I should have cleaned this rust off, and I didn't, but I'm probably going to MIG weld this I had a hard time getting that to bite with the torch, with the TIG torch. So I'm probably gonna grind that little tit off and then MIG weld all this stuff and get it to work. But basically we're close on this one. We'll be able to use it. So, so this, just like this one, I'll cut, I'll cut along that seam. So we're looking at this right here, this sort of thing. I would love to be able to get in and get that hole. I don't know if I can get in there, but, um, and I'm probably gonna make a separate piece on the back. So, I got lucky. Here's a piece from the cross rail cut off, and it is, 
it's the right piece to make this patch panel. So I got really lucky. I got a break. I could have bent this up. But um, I am now going to use this piece. And what I'll do to make this bend here is I'll wind up cutting a notch. I'll cut a notch in it like this. And this. And then when that's cut out, I'll take this and bend it up. And it'll make this part round. And it should... Uh, it should match this pretty well. So uh, the other thing I had to do is I put it in the cowl to make sure that this, this is in the right place. So before I weld it up and finish fitting it, I'll actually put this in the car, in the cowl, and I'll bolt all this down to make sure that the angle of this diagonal piece, make sure that this ang angle is uh, correct. So this is a big pain in the ass, and this is what I would call a hack job. It's definitely a hack fix, uh, but it's I'm rescuing this car, and I just want to get it uh, so it's all back together, and a lot of this metal will last another hundred years, you know? This is Henry Ford metal, and the stuff just, it rusts when it was full of water, but as long as you leave it dry, the stuff doesn't rust away. So that's where we're at. So we're going to uh, do some measuring. All right, so this isn't uh, like a straight angle. You have the crotch here and you have a crotch here. So it's going to be a little different. You've got that and this. So... So I took the two pieces and I laid them in there. So these two angles don't match. But that's going to be okay. And now, figure out how much material we need. We're going to cut that out, cut this piece out, we're going to bend it. Her patch. I might have cut a little too much metal out of here, but um, we should be okay. So I brought the cowl over here, and uh, it turns out that I can just use this cowl as a jig. So what I'll do is I will put the bolts in here. I'll put some bolts in where the upper, where the fender extension uh, rivets to the cowl, the firewall. And uh, I'll put down here, I'll put this in place where it belongs. I got some hammer and dolly work to straighten this. 
I got a little tiny bit of hammer and dolly work to straighten the front. Um, so that's a little crooked. Just a little messed up. Uh, this line here is messed up. So we'll pound that out. That fits better. So what happens, uh, this line here goes up that way. So this is going to wound up getting bent. This needs to be bent this way a little bit. So. Alright, so I put just a little stretch on that. You can see it went this way. Now when we bend this together, it's actually going to help because it's going to get this gap closed here. And that looks awesome. So now I've, I've tilted it this way. I just put a little stretch. When you use the stretcher, you don't go all the way in. You only go halfway in and you get good results. I got a little bit of bite marks. It's all right. Um, so that's where we're at. So I'll get these bolts in here. I'll get this thing all jigged up. Uh, actually, maybe I'll start cutting some out first. I gotta get rid of these rivets. And I gotta start seeing where I'm going to do my cut. Looking good though. You get that in there. Then I'll have to make this piece later. Just like I did on the other one. All right, so I cleaned this up a little bit. Where we're gonna weld, um, cleaned in here. And I cut the rivets off, ground, oh, I thought I ground the bottom off, I didn't. So I'll be able to pop these rivets out, two rivets right here. And I do, I do have to grind these bottoms off, so that comes easy, off easy. I cut this and, um, I, I stretch this a little bit more to get a little more of the angle that I need here. But I might be dreaming that I can use this piece like this. I might wind up having to cut it and weld it. I mean, I got to weld here anyway. So, so right now we are close, except that we actually it actually needs to do this a little bit more. But that's where we're going with these projects. You gotta cut a little bit, fit it, cut it, fit it, cut it, fit it. But um, this, uh, these parts are holding me up. And this is the kind of thing where you stand around and you wonder, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna fix this thing? And uh, once these two, I mean, uh, same with these patch panels. I got these patch panels in. Uh, this piece is pretty much ready to go. I got a little crack to weld up uh, and some things to weld up that I messed up. But this is, these are holding the whole project up. These are holding up the, um, the progress of the whole entire project. So it's good to get going on them, good to get them done. And uh, like I say, this is the type of thing where you get an old rat rod or an old rod and you uh, old car and you just stand there and you stare at it and you wonder how am I going to fix that how am I going to do this so I hope these videos help because one of the things I learned this morning is that this cowl piece will actually be my jig to put this together and you know had I bought the set for $250 uh, I guess I could have used once this is repaired, you can use this for your jig to put those together. I'm sure that they have to be cut and fit. I don't know. But now we know that we can use the cowl for the jig. And till this morning, I didn't know that. So uh, you learn as you go. 
And yes, this is a hack job. We're doing a hack job here. We're just trying to get it done. Just trying to get it back together. We will be cleaning as much rust off of this with a wire brush, and then we're going to hit it with um, rusty metal primer. And uh, it's another decision I had to make because I'm trying to decide whether or not we're going to keep the patina on this car. And I still want you guys to comment on that. But on the inside, I mean, this really needs to be painted. I couldn't justify putting this all together and not putting some kind of rust paint on it. So uh, I'm at least going to paint the inside with the rusty metal primer and these edges and uh, then decide on the outside whether to keep that patina or whether to paint the car. So I need uh, comments, opinions on that, and uh, we want to figure out if we're going to paint this car or not. So I'm going to keep hacking away at the fitting and cutting, and uh, I'm probably going to cut this off because it doesn't look like this is going to fit the way I want it. And I'll probably start going with this patch first. I'll cut this off. I'll get where that needs to be. And I'll put that piece in first, and then I'll fit this piece. And we'll take it from there. All right, so yeah, I wound up cutting this in half. It's going to fit nice on here. So I'm going to cut this metal short. I'm going to cut it way short on this side of the line because we can always cut off more metal and move this back up. Okay, I cut that off with what I call a zinger wheel on an electric grinder. There's a lot of stuff that can bite you and hurt you here, but we just very carefully are going to go like this and try, try our piece. So I, I keep leaving this metal so that I know where the other piece goes. So I cut out a little bit at a time instead of just excavating the whole thing. We want to uh, continue to keep information as to where things go. Like I said, we got some really jagged edges here, so we're going to file that stuff. Get those little razor blades off. And like I say, we're going to need to cut it here. We'll probably cut it here. And uh, then this thing will drop into place. So I got some pieces made. And uh, I'm getting to the place where I could probably weld them in. Not quite. I got some adjusting to do. But what I did is I put this uh, sub rail extension in the cowl. And you can see that this can move back and forth. So in order to get where it needs to be, I have to move this over. Also, the way it was, if I moved that over, it would have brought this up and it would have made the, block, the body block crooked. So I feel like what I got to do is take this whole cowl piece and mount it on the frame and bolt it down find the major block hole and uh, put everything together. And the reason, one of the biggest reasons is that I don't know where this whole cowl piece belongs. So I don't want to commit, I don't want to weld this when this thing is so, uh, so adjustable. So I want to figure out where it belongs, both sides. Get it squared up. Check this out. I got a rivet there. It's making noise. That'll drive you crazy while you're driving the car. So we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to redo that rivet. So uh, I'm gonna take you over to the frame and show you a few things I did to line this thing up. All right, I want to show you a little trick I did to uh, mount and figure out where these mounts go. Now these. Uh, these two big body mount holes are quarter inch 
carriage bolts from the factory. But what I've done is I've drilled everything out to half inch because I like to have a bigger bolt and uh, it just, it worked out well for me because of what I'm doing here. So I'm not going with the quarter inch carriage bolts, I'm going with big half inch bolts. Now I took a piece of this conduit, this is half inch PVC conduit, yeah half inch PVC. So what I did is I drilled it out to half inch so that this bolt would fit in there. So the bolt would fit in there. And then I cut this little piece off. So this conduit, the outer diameter fits nice and snug in that hole. So I took that little piece that I made and I made it into a sleeve and now that bolt will rest centered in the hole and I can go like this put the nut on I'll do the same for the other side so I'll put that in there put the washer on there and now these studs will stick up and that is where the, uh, the mounting holes for the subframe and, and the subframe extensions belong. But I've repaired this, and this is going to slide underneath there. But I need to figure out where to drill these two holes on the top. And I can enlarge them a little bit. It won't matter because the subrail is going to sit on top of there and sandwich it. But you need this thickness in here to so that everything falls the way it should, the way it was designed. But who knows where those holes belong. So what I'm going to do, put my body blocks under. So here is the front one. And I'll put these body blocks in. And as it stays centered on my stud that I have sticking up centered on this hole, you know, I'll put the other two in. I'll, uh, I'll bolt it down tight. I'll center it, make sure it's centered and square on the frame because it, it does have wiggle room. So I'll be, I'll pay attention to this and then I'll do some measurements off the frame, off the center line, and I'll get this thing centered on the car where it belongs. Then I can take these studs out and then I can slide the subrail extensions in and I can determine where that hole is, is going to go. And what's cool about this frame table, <laughs> I mean, not everybody has a frame table. Sometimes you're working on your knees and stuff like that. But I can take this mirror and I can put it under here and I can see those holes. So this has saved me a lot, a lot of time. See that bolt right there? So I'm able to look at this, see how things are centered. I haven't even drilled this hole yet, but uh, that's the way I'm going to tackle that. Then when I take those pins out, I can slide this in and I can put it where it belongs. Then I'm actually going to put the cowl on it. And I'm going to jig up the other side and be able to weld it together while it's, while it's uh, bolted down to the frame. So I'm going to get everything bolted down. I'm going to get some temporaries, temporaries in where, the, um, where all the rivets go. And I will be riveting this back together. I'll put some bolts in where the bolts go. I'll get the whole thing assembled. And then tighten down to the car, and then I will be able to determine, first of all, how to weld up that side, because I got this in a couple pieces on the other one, and I'll be able to determine where to weld this with it all set in place and, and tightened down. And I'll also be able to, uh, first of all, I'll be able to uh, get these bolt holes where they belong. And all the mount bolts will be there. All the blocks will be in, and uh, 
it will all be socked down to the car so that I can finish these subrail extensions. The subrail extensions are holding up the whole project because I can't do anything with the back of the car, the doors in the back of the car, until I uh, get the cowl centered and situated on the car. Also, I have one of the, the templates that I made, and I made this off the old subrail. I made it so that I could put this on this line here, and I could match it up with this line here, and then I was able to determine, like I said, where to punch the holes to put these holes. If I had to do it again, I wouldn't have tried to drill the front holes. I only would have done the back holes uh, because when it's all moving around and everything, uh, there, may, there could be, need some adjustment. Plus, if you had this wrong, you're going to get less error from the back hole than you will from the front hole because the front hole swings a larger arc. Also, these small holes are going to be where the rivets go. So I'm actually going to put rivets back in where uh, Henry did. So I did a lot of measuring of these subrails to make sure that they were similar to the old subrails so that when I took measurements, like I took a measurement off of here and here and I measured this and I measured this to double check things, that these, I wanted to be sure that these weren't really different from the original. And they're not. They're really good. The, the measurements that I took were quite, uh, were pretty much dead on from the originals. I mean, even this, this gets, uh, this gets, that's that big rivet in the uh, bottom of the, of the curve on the cowl. So a lot of work to do here. Uh, but this trick with the, the trick with the conduit helped me a lot because I was able to get that thing centered and I had the material in my garage. All right, so I got my subrails all bolted down. Not gonna move, dead nuts. And it was easy, <laughs> it was easy to line up because I took so much time to, uh, to do them right in the first place and I spent, spent hours lining these things up. So once I got them all riveted together, they came out nice, they came out pretty good. So now I wanna know where to drill these holes in the uh, subrail extension and I want to make sure that that my angle on this cowl piece is correct. So the cowl side, we want to check the angle. So I'm going to put this subrail back in. Here's the other one, and it's all cut up because we're repairing it. Here's some parts. So this one will go on easy because it's flimsy. Now we want to get that body wood in there. That went easy. Now we're going to slide this in here. Alright, so now I'm really getting somewhere. When you're doing this stuff, you want to use the largest bolt possible so that it fills the whole space. So here's where my mirror comes in. I can't see the hole. There's the other one. So now I can see where to drill that hole and I can get it right. And I can also finish drilling this hole I'm going to do the same on the other side, and I'm going to drill these holes, clamp it down. I'm going to get the, the bolts in there. I'll get, the, uh, I'll get my patch panels in here. I'll take some measurements and figure out where this thing belongs. So it looks like this. Yeah, so this body panel needs to go out. So what I'll do, I'll get a center line, I'll measure from here and there to the center line, I'll get that the same, so we know what this angle is here. Gonna get this angle right. 
And then, uh, you know, we got to get the blocks fitting. We got to get it put down. I'll get all the rivets in where they go or some temporary. And then I can be serious about where these patch panels go. Oh, it's looking good. And this little piece is going here. And I'm going to have all new metal in there. Oh, baby. So that's actually looking good.